finally getting ready for the interview, I just wanted you all to know it has been such a joy for me. The positivity with all that's going on and being able to hear these wonderful people and hear you all interact. So I'm honored. Oh, this is so exciting for us. I've been sharing some stories and and like you and I have talked, Judy, it's um, it's so interesting because everyone has a fascinating story, but very rarely, like your story, there's so much to it. I mean, we'll get into it and I'll, I'll start this right away. Um, I, welcome everyone. I'm excited to introduce Stanford University graduate geologist, entrepreneur and business leader, Judy Jordan. If you recognize Judy Jordan being from the famous Jordan wine family, you are correct. If you know Judy from instead of running her family's wine business, she took the bolder, more adventurous and harder path to start her own wine company. You're also correct if you know that about her, but there's so much more. Judy Jordan found and built Jay Wine. Judy was enormously successful with Jay Wine, achieving acclaim worldwide. She eventually sold Jay Wine to successfully begin her next entrepreneur path with Geodesy and giving back to inspire and mentor young women in the agricultural field. A fascinating episode we have for you to rethink how you view your own legacy, the land, enjoying learning about your own best self and finding commonalities from connections of the whole. Thank you for joining us, Judy Jordan. Thank you, Andrea. It's a pleasure to be here with you and Karen and Adriana as well. We're super excited about this. And we're going to start with Adriana, and she's going to take a deep dive into your awesomeness. Judy, thank you for being on the podcast with us. It's wonderful. It's such an honor. Um, congratulations on graduating from Stanford University with a degree in geology and earth sciences. I grew up with a love of the land and being able to enjoy nature since a young child. I also learn the basic process of making wine when I was a little girl by using the manual pressing machine to squeeze the grapes. Well, I mostly ended up eating most of the grapes and, mm -hmm. and I really enjoyed watching the elders mixing different types of grapes and, and all the different values they were measuring I'm on, a, on a much smaller scale than you, but I'm st I still thoroughly enjoyed it and there's so much to it and, and I'm very grateful for that. I wanted to ask you, were you always connected to the earth and nature since you were a child? Well, Adriana, it has, for me, I always, I enjoy going to school, but my, what I really wanted to do was be outside. And my first experience of being outside was similar to you, to, similar to you, Adriana, and you, Andrea, was so much about sports. So I grew up just, you know, I'd, I'd have the shakes in the classroom and couldn't wait to get outside. And then as, as time progressed, I really I had a love for nature. Um, my dad is a geologist, so he was inspirational for me as well. And then I loved going on field trips uh, in junior high and high school, and then certainly in college when we would do studies. All right. <laughs> I love it. That's a, that's kind. Of, that's why I was leading to it. What prompted you to become a geologist, and and what fueled your your passion um, in earth sciences? That's that's wonderful. Um, I would after, say one. Yeah, I would just say one thing that one of the wonderful advantages of being an earth scientist or a geologist is that no matter where you go. No matter where you go, you look out, you can be outside or traveling anywhere and something is interesting. It's like a puzzle, right? Mm -hmm. oh, I get this puzzle piece. So it is a lot of fun to, to uh, have that ability to, in, you know, to, uh, to want to inquire. Absolutely. I mean, the knowledge that you, you, you have and possess and, and studied for so many years and evolved and now you go outside it must be so incredible I mean so fascinating I love it um okay after selling your business in 2015 you started a charitable organization to give back the organization focuses on young aspiring women in agricultural region providing scholarships and connections to multi-generational mentors your belief is that effective social change can be accomplished through strategic philanthropy, business acumen, and flexible investments. Can you elaborate on that? And what was your experience being in a field where you were one of the pioneers yourself? 
Well, uh, choosing to build my own winery with the support of my dad, he, he uh, gave me my first vineyard and my first press, and that supported me very much. Um, it, is, it was definitely a, ma a male's world. Most of the owners, or I would say almost all the owners uh, and the landholders it, were men. At that time, the bankers, um, the farmers. So even my strategic team, you know, when I started the company, I was 29 years old, uh, 28 years old. And so at that time, you know, all the, the men on the strategic team uh, were the leaders. Uh, and yes, they were male. Um, so for me, as I went through that whole process, and these were wonderful men who were very supportive and, and fabulous business partners. Um, and yet there were not a lot of women uh, with whom I could share, you know, I could ask in the bathroom, oh, do I have a piece of spinach in my teeth before I go make this presentation? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Or, you know, does this skirt look all right before whatever? How am I doing out here in the vineyards and my jeans and um, top? Is it working or, you know, mm -hmm. or what's what's showing? Right. And and so uh, for me, it was something that over time I realized as I was building this company that I had another dream. And that dream was to become more involved with young women, especially in agriculture, to support them uh, to, to be able to come back in and, and become leaders in our own in our own industry out here in uh, wine country. So, you know, the way I like to think about it is, is in, you can see in the background, that is Sage Vineyards. That's a mountainous vineyard in Napa. It's absolutely spectacular. It's such a challenging vineyard. Um, and of course, it's been through fires and through drought. And we've had, all, we've had our share of challenges over the last couple of years. And if you take one of those little vines out there, and you see that poor little struggling vine out there on that mountain with all the wind and everything. What is nourishing it is these beautiful soils, as well as the, you know, when we do get the fabulous water, that precipitation is, is, is just liquid gold for it. And then it flourishes, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what I feel like happened for me and building J Vineyards and Winery is I was so lucky. There were so many wonderful agricultural families who supported us. Um, and, you know, I had so many people and partnerships and friends who supported me and as an entrepreneur, as a young woman entrepreneur. And so I was able to flourish. And so my children and I flourished and we had our little grapes on our vine. And then over time, the grapes are harvested, I got to sell J. And then now the idea is just like in fall after the harvest, you know, the leaves fall and the nutrients go back into the ground and then they and then they allow for another flourishing. Well, the idea is that the next round, once my leaves fall and go down, hopefully this is an opportunity for the next generation of young women to flourish. Beautiful. Oh, thank you for sharing. Uh, that's that's wonderful, and I can relate to to in in a different way with with the sports that I grew up in. Um, in general, sports are a male dominated um, field, especially tennis and different different types of sports. And um, my father was the one who who led me through it mostly, and and it's different to it's different to have a male role model in a sense. And then I met Andrea and all of a sudden Andrea is, is, you know, is this amazing, incredible human. She still been... wanted the male role models after meeting me. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I see a completely different perspective. I'm like, wow, this, there is this, this amazing, incredible uh, human being and he's a female and, and I can, we can relate to each other in a different way. And and like you said, you, you blossom and flourish and grow and then and then you want to pass on the knowledge. And that's so wonderful that you do that. Um, what I kept you? You know, add, if you don't mind me, Julia, yeah, is absolutely. that in my age group, you know, uh, year of the dinosaurs is what we like to think of ourselves mm -hmm. now. 
is that in my for my age group of women um, leaders and entrepreneurs, 80 to 90 percent of mentors were male, right? Mm-hmm. And so, and like you were saying, how you know how wonderful that is. Your dad supported you so much, and all that. And yet, isn't that a wonderful opportunity now for us with the next generation to bring in um, women as the mentors to young women? It's just a great opportunity. Absolutely, it's wonderful to to meet people like you and 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 ask you these questions and inspire other and aspiring women young younger generations absolutely it's it's i'm so so grateful um for that so have you know you are just touching just scratching the surface on the things you've done um and your life and and to get there you must have gone through um it wasn't always easy and if if at all what kept you going when you were faced with various challenges and disappointments throughout your life well, um, uh, Adriana and An- Andrea, it's such an honor to be with both of you because I would tell you, as many of your other uh, wonderful people who've been on this podcast, that tennis, it was the tennis mindset that actually really helped me to uh, become an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Um, and for the reasons that so many of you have discussed, I think about um uh, I think about courage to get out on the court, especially with singles, right? Mm-hmm. And so I didn't play at the levels you all did. I did play, you know, I was one of the top uh, juniors in Inner Mountain Region, which was seven states, and then played nationals, um, and then a half scholarship at Stanford. Um, but nothing like you two, nothing. However, I'm sure I went through a lot of the same experiences, which was, you know, how do you get the courage to get out on that court to meet that whoever that girl is going to be on the other side? The other one is I think about um, uh, team building and how important that was. I know Kathy Rinaldi talked a lot about that. And I learned that how to build departments, how to inspire through tennis. Um, Another one is, as uh, Dr. Len talked about, is resilience. You know, all of us who play tennis, we, we, you know, you have a bad, terrible shot or the other, the opponent wins the shot and the crowd cheer and you're just so bummed out. It's like, oh God, how do I get, how do I recover? Well, you have to recover, right? It's like a, um, Ted Lasso, be the goldfish, right? You gotta, you gotta, uh, just let it go and get right back into it. And then I would also add endurance, right? Mm-hmm. For me, being in the agricultural business, I was sharing with Andrea, it, it makes, you know, it's, it's crazy. It takes eight years for us to make a wonderful bottle of wine. So those grapes that you see behind us, they just keep on growing for four years before we can harvest most of them. And then it takes another couple of years to make a great bottle of wine. And so endurance and that, you know, tennis, oh my God, oh my goodness. Uh, When I think about splitting sets and having been down in the second set and how do you take that break and get yourself ready to, to really pull it out in the third set. So I am so grateful to my experience of tennis and I think those tenets and those those values have um, held strong throughout my life. Oh, that's amazing. Oh my goodness. Did you enjoy uh, did you enjoy singles or doubles more or I love singles. Singles. Okay. Singles that's wonderful. Oh, but what I a beautiful a, I have a titanium hip because of it. Oh <laughs> yes, we yeah, it can happen with um yeah, the body. But that's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing and um how inspiring to to compare it to that. And I know it's um it's beautiful the wine process i i you know i don't have that vast knowledge as you do and it goes with life it's so much patience that goes to it too it's incredible like you were explaining um the vineyards that are even behind you it it goes through so many changes like the fires and it exactly gets that little bit of water and it blossoms and 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 can grow um and recover yeah, I was going to say that, um, you know, what you'd asked about um, adversity and, mm-hmm. oh, and we all know it because we're living it right now with our climate, you know, issues and all that sort of thing. 
um, just what the what those little vines in the background um, that you see, what they go through is absolutely amazing. And it's um, what it, it what's so beautiful for us in our world is that every year we get to celebrate the harvest. And we're so grateful. It's that whole gratitude of being able to that these little guys made it through three or four years. And we didn't even talk about disease. I mean, we have so many, you know, agricultural diseases that can wipe out um, a whole section of a vineyard or even a whole vineyard, you know, so we have, they mm -hmm. have to overcome disease, they have to find their nutrients in these very rugged soils to feed upon, we have to have enough rain. Um, so those those little guys need rain. Um, and it's, it, uh, also has to have the right pH, you know, which is important from the rain and what that precipitation is like. Um, the sun has to be at a certain angle uh, at certain times in the year. Uh, we also have frost uh, in the in the spring. We always look at it like between Mother's Day, uh, between Easter and Mother's Day. That's the way we look at it. Is the most tenuous time for any of these frosts to come, and a frost can just completely wipe out a vineyard. And mm -hmm. so we everything is so precarious and so precious. And therefore, when the harvest comes, it just brings enormous gratitude. And for us in the wine business, now that's just the start, right? We just mm -hmm. brought in the grapes. And Adriana, you may remember this since it sounds like you are a very sophisticated winemaker. <laughs> um, I want your recipe. Um, I'll have to yeah. I'll have to get that from my from my secret recipe of my father. I just remember they were so happy after the like you said after the wine goes through the stages and yes. it matures. It's such an amazing experience. It it's is. so humbling. It is. Once it is. the grapes come in and then and then it's it's the best mix of art and science to re really actually over those next couple of years, these winemakers are brilliant of how they manage the flavors and the profiles mm -hmm. and everything to make the beautiful wines in the end. Oh, what it's truly incredible. Thank you so much, Judy. It's very interesting hearing you and and we've had these conversations before, Judy, but um, just recently in the podcast, you've recognized I mean, you've, you've watched and you've brought up so many things about some of the different guests and that there was a commonality of the confidence and the resilience and the ability to overcome and, and the tennis aspects. A lot of the guests um, lo have loved growing up playing tennis and, and, and still do it. And, and you talked about courage too. And so Karen's coming up next and, and so often like the guests that we've had on other than Samina, who's very similar in the world of how Karen grew up with childhood cancer. We all, the, you know, the guests in us and, and audiences out there that grew up playing, like really got to play in their childhood, whether it was a sport that they loved or just a sport they be, they came to love later on in life. We had that ability. And when, um, you know, you, when I think about courage and about childhood, I was able to travel the world and play tennis and, and have so much fun. And, and you were an incredible tennis player. I knew that from Susie, um, my sister who graduated and was at Stanford with you and, and Adrian and I have had that, that same growing up tendency and Karen coming up next, it's a whole different childhood. It's, you know, it's a childhood that wasn't able to have that and, and to have that strength and in, in perseverance. And, and you did lay some of that groundwork with what the you know the land does and what people do together like they have to get through disease and they have to you know get a connection of this the the rain and the moisture and and agriculture of people with a passion for it and then you know because I've spent the last 38 years full time with children with cancer and other life-threatening diseases I marvel at it, like what you, you say with a like a plant or a, a grape that comes up and finds a way finds life and and so some of the you know, great inspirational um, things that I've received in life has has been from people like you, Judy, and people in the world who have gone out and overcome and, and have had these amazing entrepreneur careers. And that's what we're trying to share with audiences. But it also includes these little kids that I met that had cancer and didn't know about their tomorrow. And their teachers 
just as much in in a way, in a very special way. And so, Karen, um, that was a long introduction. You know, I could talk to you <laughs> for like days and months and years at time. But so here's um uh, here's Karen coming in. We're so excited to have her um uh, unique take on the world because it's it's different than how we all grew up. Everyone has the different upbringing, and and so here's Karen. <laughs> Hi, Judy. It's a pleasure meeting you. Thank you for being with us today. Um, so I know you mentioned a lot that while you were, you know, doing the agriculture and stuff, a lot of it was men based, pretty much. So how did you have the confidence in yourself to go into a career where few women were in? How did you develop a confidence? And would you be able to relate any stories for that? Mm -hmm. Oh, um, thank you for the question, Karen. And such a good one. You know, I was thinking about you, Karen, because I followed your story a bit and then hearing the introduction from Andrea. And, you know, I'm guessing I, that some of that beautiful resilience that you have, what you've overcome, is some, is a lot of it is about what's inside of you and how strong you are. And it's also about the people who were around you that inspired you and that were there for you, right? And, and um, you could call it faith, you can call it agriculture. I mean, all Aspen trees, all of them are connected. I mean, the root systems are, are all connected, right? And there's a whole study about how trees actually whisper to each other, right? And so, what I have found through my experience is that it was the women who surrounded me when I was going, when I was building my company, it was the good people who would cheer me on at my silly little tennis matches. It was, um, it was, I had a wonderful mentor, Lou Platt, who was the former CEO of Hewlett Packard and had 270,000 employees, but he would come up to, because he loved wine. That was, I wasn't my personality, um, but he would come up and I would take him out in the vineyards and then return in return, he would look at my financials and help me with inspirational um, concepts. So when I think of all the hard times I've been through at Jay and I, you know, I've lost harvest. I, um, I actually, you know, went out of business a couple of times because I was carrying inventory and I couldn't pay for it. We had a flood that actually destroyed um, the inventory that I had. And um, and so it took, you know, I had a wonderful team, but we had to rebuild again. Um, all those things that happen um, is what I found is that if we could, if we, if I can, in this part of my life, help support young women in our community to have a network of, of women and a net to help support them, to give them the confidence as well as the possibilities for them to have the faith, to be able to try uh, to go through those open doors, whatever those open doors they want to, and give them as many open doors as possible, because they are going to go through so much in their lives, that that that's a way I can repay for what was given to me during really, really hard times. Mm -hmm. And I would guess that you probably have stories about that. Uh, Karen, I'd be curious, did you have a mentor when you were going through what you were going through? Or did you have somebody that helped you pull through? Um, well, I was pretty young when I had leukemia. Um, but actually, uh, once I met Andrea as well, like have that experience through Colorado and it yeah. was amazing. I kind of, it built my confidence a bit and kind of helped me get through it. So, yeah. <laughs> You know, Andrea, that means so much because you're a woman mentor. And that's <laughs> I, every time. And I feel bad because when Adriana said that, I'm like, no, nope, no. Nope. <laughs> and when Karen said that, I just went, oh my God. <laughs> Why would you feel bad? It's true. It's no, how we it's share. True. It's important. I know. I should you know, be it means very, the world to us. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm so honored and I shouldn't have reacted <laughs> that way. I guess I'm just surprised because I didn't step into that role. 
and and had I thought about that, like I want to mentor Adriana, I think I would have done it even differently and better, better. It was more like, hey, she wants to help the foundation. Great, okay, help. Here's how you can help. Let's do this together. Let's do a great thing. <laughs> yeah, it, it was it was if, amazing. Yeah. It, it, so Sorry. I didn't really. I think if I would look at, oh, my, my role is to mentor, I think I would do it differently. And I'm so grateful that it happened naturally. I just, I just, um, you know, it's just such a strange thing because I don't see me in that role. And so whenever <laughs> someone says, and I'm like, oh my gosh, really? Oh gosh, I, sh- I could have done this. I could have done that. So I right away automatically go to, I could have done that so much better. I was just trying, like in Karen's case, you know, and all the kids with cancer, okay, one, my role is to keep them safe and then to have fun. And then, and so the, the blessing to me was they, they did, they had some of the times of their life at these programs. And we still, so many of us are still friends and the ones that have passed on, we hold them still dear, but I just, um, it's just a strange thing. So whenever they say it, I'm like, oh my gosh, seriously? I got a Judy, that you're not better. like that, right? You're you're good now. You're <laughs> like you're used to it. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I'm know, sorry. I, I so Andrea, I can't wait till you step into your own boots and ex- <laughs> and just accept how amazing and inspiring you are. Yes, Andrea. <laughs> Andrea, the thing I believe, because I've known Andrea for uh, since she was 17 is I believe that it you have led with heart, with authenticity, and with your the values that you got from tennis. And because heart and faith and authenticity were at the front, I think that's you you aced it. And from my perspective, because I'm older than you, is that it the generation of women before me, they were the ones that had to break the glass ceilings, right? Get the jobs, right? And it doesn't, we're still, as women, we're still breaking glass ceilings. But, and I think the generation before me were just amazing because they had to start breaking those glass ceilings, right? Yeah, they got caught. You're absolutely caught. right. Or generations I, before me, it may not even be one, but I do believe that you, Andrea, you, you broke a glass ceiling because you became an inspiration and a, a mentor to so many um, as a woman. And, and it wasn't long ago that there just weren't a lot of yeah, I, women mentors. I, thank you for saying it that way. That way I can accept, because I know my era of Martina and Billie Jean and Chris, they, um, Pam Schreiber was part of that and Tracy Austin, they broke the glass, but they got, um, especially Martina, Chris and Billie Jean, they got cut breaking the glass in so many industries. Yeah that was industry um, standard. You, if you are going to provide a path for others, you're, there's going to be harm or hurt, or you're going to suffer some of the consequences in that. And then the next generation reaps the benefit. And so for me, I just have always, like you said, I, I just was led by, okay, God's presenting something for me to do. I'm going to go do it. Okay. Awesome. And so, and it's interesting in this podcast, I'm starting, there's one of the things I was going to bring up later. It's about legacy because you're, that was so much part of you, Judy. Um, but I know Karen has another question coming up, but thank you for sharing that. Cause I, I am getting better at that. It's just, I didn't, I didn't grow up or I haven't lived a life of going, I want to be a, a mentor for this. It's like, this is what I'm called to do. I'm going to go do it. And so to have that kind of impact on someone, I'm like, oh my gosh, did did I do that? Well, I need, I kept them safe and had the, they had fun, but oh my goodness, that's a, that's a big, important role. I want to make sure that I honor it. <laughs> so I'm like, wow, uh, that's huge. I better just go do some more studying to be good at it or something. <laughs> so anyway, I'm, okay. So Karen started for this long interruption. Judy, thank you for clarifying. Adrian, I'm sorry you for think, that I interruption think, earlier. You know what? I think, I think Andrea was number two in the world in tennis and that's okay. I wish she was number one, but that's okay. <laughs> but she's number one yeah. for, for inspiration and to lead by example and to let your heart um, and soul um, lead, and you you aced it, my friend. That that's that's very kind, and and I am yeah, grateful for those those special sharing. So Karen, hurry, go. <laughs> 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 okay, all right. Well, my last question, Judy. Um, it's just a really basic one. Uh, so 
your love for the land and your passion for people, do you feel that that combination helped you bring success to your life? Yes, um, because that's what I know how to do, right? I wouldn't say I chose it because that's going to give me success. It's just those are, I think, Karen, what my North Star is, is right now is to do everything I can to leverage my time, treasure, and talent to offer that back to my community or to and to community in general. And, you know, to give you an example, I know, Karen, you've been through so much. So the young women I have, we have several young, I mean, we have many young women. And just to give an example, one whose name is Karen, like you, she, um, she had a really, really tough upbringing. And, and yet there was a lot of love around her. And she submitted a paper to me as a senior in high school that wrote about um, uh, fires and her interest in nature in trying to understand and mitigate fires or to figure out how to make them work properly, you know, support fires working properly in nature. And at the time when we read it, we thought, oh, you know, fires, you're interested in fires? That's interesting. And it turned out, as Andrea knows, you know, because you came out during the, the 2017 fires, the year later, I mean, we, you know, I lost my friend, friends of mine lost 30, 30 of my friends lost 30 homes. And then, you know, vineyards were lost and all that. And you guys all know from the last couple of years. And so Karen stuck with the program, which was really about this a group of women leaders who offered her connectivity and confidence building. And she stuck with us. And then as a result of that, one of the women in, in our group of leaders knew um, Gavin Newsom, who's the governor of California. And so one connection came after the other. And now she's running, she has a big role at Grizzly Corps which is like AmeriCorps. And so at age 23, after graduating fully from college and in agriculture, she's now one of the leaders and her focus is forest, um, is forest care and fire mitigation. So, you know, and that's one of so many stories as you, as you can well imagine. Um, they're just amazing, right? And resilience and how, and courage to overcome. Yes, yes. Thank you for sharing that. It was mm. really um, amazing learning new something new. This is definitely something new for me. So <laughs> thank you. That is a great story because that's something like when you look back, Judy, of all the, um, you know, you put out your good in the world. And, and when people put out good in the world, it's you have a like an attachment to it. It's like those people, they soar, they do what they do. You do what you can. You have no, um, you know, no tie to it in a sense where you, you want them to um, be a certain way. It's like you gave your little input. And, and so to hear that story, to know that you've helped influence and mentor someone who is helping the world in terms of, you know, the like fire management, management or mitigation and, and to, help the earth and the land and people, because there's not always that understanding. We're, we're kind of a little bit in conflict with that. So that's, that's such a cool story. So um, on my sharing here, what I wanted to ask you about is um, like your passion is evident and, and your mind and your passion work together very well. And, and it brings about a resiliency. It brings about, um, and this is probably before you even went to Stanford, but I know um, several Stanford graduates, and they have a very astute analytical ability. And I don't know if that's just something that that happens with them, but you have that as well. And you have purposeful action. So when you put all those together, success is going to arrive somehow, some way. And even if it doesn't, if there's a challenge, you overcome that. So is that part of a, a gifting, a built upon experience, taught how does someone who doesn't necessarily have those things naturally, how do they get them? 
oh, you know. <laughs> I'm I Professor say, Judy now. <laughs> I'm going to go back. I do think it's lovely to go to Stanford. And I agree that there's some wonderful learnings there. And I still think um, the school of hard knocks is the way to go. And wherever that is. And, you know, as you and I've talked to Angie, you know, I'm so many of us, there, there's a lot of us who've been blessed and there's a lot of us who had a really, really tough um, start. And yet as um, there's a great expression, uh, which is the waves will come and it's all about how you surf them. Cowabunga, right? Like, how do you surf them, right? It's about how you deal with that. And it doesn't matter where you go to school or where you're from, we're all, we're all the same in that regard. And what I like to believe is that it's through the courage and the willingness to put yourself out there so that you don't get stuck with fear that keeps you in fixed mindsets, no matter if it's that you're up against cancer or you're up against a report that says there's disease in the vineyard and you may not be able to meet payroll next week, right? It, it, either one of those, when you, get, when you get fearful, which is false expectations appearing real, it shuts us down and it doesn't allow us to, to open ourselves and say, you know what? I got this, I can push through it and um, to have the courage to do that. And the thing that you've offered, Andrea, and Karen's doing it now with, with being a mentor to others in the, in the cancer world. And what I'm hoping to offer is I can't solve those problems, but I can, I can be there. I can have these young women's backs Whatever, where, wherever they turn, whatever failures they have, because we got to have failures. We just want to fail quickly and fail a lot because that's how we're going to learn. And if we've got, if we, if we can choose to just have each other's backs as, as women looking out for young women or, or, or elders looking out for wonderful young people, it's the connections. It's, it's all about that. And we can offer opportunities and be there to help them to help themselves, help them pick themselves up and keep at it. Don't give up. Mm, absolutely. That's a really good way of putting it. I've noticed um, because, because of how, when I grew up, my parents, and you probably know this, Judy, my parents didn't have the financial means to send us to college. They worked really hard. We had a great roof over our, you know, our head. We had a bed, we had food. Um, you know, it's, it's something where we knew if we wanted to go to college, we would have to get a scholarship somehow to be able to afford to go to college. And so I think there was so much more pressure on my sister in terms of playing and, and yeah. competing and succeeding. And when she, she received many, um, I remember a lot of different colleges were recruiting her and she let me go on these recruitment trips and it was so cool. I mean, I was like, uh, I mean, she was, probably like 18 and so I was 15 I was like oh my god this is so cool they want my sister and I get to go interview these people to see if they're worthy <laughs> you know and so it was um a very special thing and it's like what you said um any university and, and Stanford's one of I just loved walking that campus I still do and it's it's such an honor when she got in we were so proud and when she graduated it was so proud it's like I have to make it to her graduation I have to be there for that but it's it's like what you said it's your life is a graduation. Every day you get through something, you've graduated from something and you've accomplished something. And that's such a cool way to go about life. And there will be those waves and how are you going to surf them? And, and so when you go back to mentoring, what I've learned from all these people having conversations about mentoring is, um, and you know, and I've heard some of these things before, like Bill Plaschke is a very, um, well-known sports columnist for the LA times. And, and he told me once that Andre Agassi said, you know, I watched what Andrea was doing and I wanted to inspire and help kids too. So I started my own foundation and I, and I was like, that's so cool to be able to, to give people a view to know who they can be as well in, in greater fashion. To me, I believe a mentor is the next group behind should be better. They should be better in everything. Um, you know, whatever they're doing, be far better because you've had this little lesson. And so 
even with like now with Adriana, it's like, okay, what's, how do you think this should go? And so much of what she does is, is something I can't even, I don't know. I don't know how to do. So it's a give and take. And that's the cool thing about um, fun mentoring in that aspect. And so um, one of the questions I have for you is, what is your definition and how would you teach finding bliss? Wow, she sure comes up with some easy questions. I love she? it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> to go back to, um, I loved when Samina talked. What 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 I what resonated for me is that every morning, I shouldn't say every morning, but most mornings I get up and the first thing I do is before I start thinking too much because it's the brain that gets in the way is I write down my gratitudes and I write down three to five gratitudes and three to five intentions for how I want to lead that day. And then, um, and then I try to read something that is a beautiful, it can be something about nature, it, it just for 10 minutes or so, something about spirituality, um, something about hope. And then I do a quiet time for myself. And you could call it meditation, um, yes, or you can call it prayer, or you can call it whatever, but it's a quiet time for myself for about 15, 20 minutes. And that, to me, allows me to calm down my, my brain, which want, has a million things going on, right? And it's so noisy. And uh, I was thinking about Jill Bolte, and Bolte, I believe her name is, and how you know I would love I mean this is terrible to say but that fourth quadrant just sounds wonderful doesn't it <laughs> yeah Dr. Jill Volte Taylor with the fourth character know, and the bliss. Where, where, yeah. where you don't have to hear all the noise in the brain so so uh I used to when I would ask for luck or do in prayer, I would ask for, oh gosh, I just need enough money to pay, do payroll this year. Or could, please, dear God, please, if you could just make sure that those little vines don't get the disease this year. Or, you know, gosh, I hope the wine's going to turn out all right and the people will like it this year or whatever. I've changed now as I've gotten older and the journey is more about, um, finding peace and ease and letting go of ego, because the more I can do that, then the better I can serve others and serve um, and be a part of um, the bounty of the nature and universe. So it's a lot about letting go, at, at least for me, and then being open and curious um, and a good listener to wait for what next is on my journey. That's really great. Uh, I especially like how you you say in the morning, you know, it's it's a to put a thought out there is one thing, but to sit down and put the put it on paper to do the action on that is uh is really important. I in the last couple of years started shifting some of my the ways I do my prayer and meditations. <laughs> I would always I'd added smoothly, easily, and successfully. I'm like, come on, do I have to do it this difficult? <laughs> it's like been a couple of knocks and, and, and bruises and cuts. So I did, when you said that smooth and ease, I'm like, yes, yes, that's a good way to have it. Um, so there's one one thing I want to mention here before closing. When when I used to visit Susie at Stanford, we you did such a kind thing in, in, in thinking about this, um, and I, and listening to some of your history over the course of the decades and here as well, it does seem you've always been at work because when I when I went to visit Susie at Stanford, you took us and we got to come and you would show us the wine. And I mean, you went through every little step and it was so fun for me. I was a teenager and I was like, oh my gosh, this is fascinating. I had no idea it took so long and it was such a process. And, and the way you passionately shared was, I, I it, it it was like better than a Disney world trip for me at that time to see how you walked us through and um, each of these rooms and, and had this private special tour. And, and to me, that's how I took it in. And now in listening to you, I realized you were working in, in a sense, you were sharing passionately, but that's been about your life is, is really um, connecting people to something, but that's, that's effort. And that's, 
Um, and it was, it was a dear kindness. And that was on your free time. You, you had like, you know, you picked a day that I happened to be in town playing a tournament and you're like, yeah, come on over, let's do this. And it was, it was such a cool thing. And I always remember that. And so I'm curious as in your process, I don't know if you've ever seen that. And if anyone has, hopefully there's generations here that will recognize this, but there's this Lucille ball moment where she goes with her friend and they get in this yeah. wine barrel of grapes and they just start stomping on them and they are laughing and having the time of their life. And did you get to have that working? Because so often people are working so hard that, and and like you said, 30 of your friends lost their homes. Some of them lost fields. You have as well. It's, and, and that's where I hope, and I was so excited that you were coming on is, yes, you've been enormously successful. You've had phenomenal international acclaim and in, in all that you've done. But the fact of the matter is you've also taken hits like, everyone has in life and you've had to get back up. You didn't, you didn't just sit down and say, oh, this is too much. You got back up. You nurtured the land. You did it again. You did it again. And, and that's, um, you know, that's something that we can all be inspired by. So did you ever have like one of those moments where I got to just, I'm going to do this Lucille ball. I'm going to get in my own barrel and with my own grapes and just start stomping and laughing. Oh my gosh, <laughs> totally. So I'm going to show you. So Andy is talking about visiting Jordan Winery, which is my family's winery. And I'm so proud of my family. And I'm really proud of my brother who is doing a great job of running Jordan now. So if you ever get a chance to go see Jordan Winery, please do. And that's what Andrea got to visit. And then I started J Vineyards and Winery. Here's the J bottle, right? You see yeah. the J? I've seen those. I've seen little ones. You've sent me some Yeah, so that's, yes. whoop, let's see. So you see that. That's yeah. the J. Okay. So what you notice bottle. the J's on there. You got to fall. You got to laugh. And you just keep on, you just like pick yourself up and, and have laughs and, and you just go, okay, moving on. I've loved that so much about you. You, um, your care for people, um, and, and your love of people and it has been really special. And, and I thank you for that. And, and it's, you know, how, how you present yourself, it makes people, and that's why I thought of the legacy part of this, you introduce people to go, wait a minute, what am I leaving behind? You know, what, who, not just, you know, later on in life, when you go to that other place after, it's just, what am I doing now? How am I impacting people now? What's, what's the inspiration of that? And, and you have a really um, special way about that. And, and I thank you for that. It's, um, you know, when, when people think about agriculture now or land and when they pass a field, I hope they, they think of that. And, and I know there's some, several people that I was fortunate enough to have mentor me, not in the tennis field so much because it, it just felt like more humanitarian that gravitated to me more. And so Paul Newman was one of those and Ted Forsman and Barbara Cox, Anthony, and, and I think of those individuals, Nelson Mandela, when we visited, he he had a very strong impression. But those other three, they were they were mentors. And the the interesting thing about it is whenever I'd go to their home, I'd bring them J Wine. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This has been so cool. So, so thank you, Judy. Your your time, treasure, and talent has um has reached a lot of people and in a way that's um, you know, people might think of wine, hey, that's enjoyment or relaxation, but there's really an education. There's a there's a land component, an agricultural component, and mentorship component that is like, wow, you know, you wake up and you you want to do better. You know, it, it's it's a really special thing. And and I've been blessed to have known you for so many decades that I thought, you know what, the world should know about your greatness too and and all that you do and, and the messaging because it's it'll you know forever inspire others as well so so thank you so much for for joining us here on and all little starlight you, you will inspire me so much and thank you for giving me the opportunity to get all uh, get to know you better adriana and you karen you both are amazing and andrea your our friendship is one of is just so precious it's liquid gold to me <laughs> thank you thank you so I much the Judy. Same way. oh thank you thank you, thank you. yes right. thank well, you thank you right. this was wonderful I love you all wonderful thank you Yay. so much did it thank go, you Judy did it, did it
did it go well from you guys? It, oh, it was oh amazing. Gosh, it was so cool. Oh. We could have gone on for like hours, but I know I try to, when I say 45 minutes, I try to keep everyone 45 minutes because that's fair and respectful to you. And and um, and you came on early, so we got an extra bonus, like five minutes with you, which was so cool. But it is, no, your your story is very inspiring and it's it gives people a chance to to all kinds of people to look back and go, wow, how am I living? What am I doing with my success or my life? Or, or you, you can be a mentor at any juncture of your life. That's, yeah, that's it, was the, such and, a, it was such a treat to be with you. And Karen, I just, some of your questions, you know, and mm -hmm. relating it back to, um, I love, there was one that really was so thoughtful about uh, I think you teed it up, but it's about, you know, whether it's Stanford or the School of Hard Knocks. And then Karen, you stepped in and talked about that from your perspective or whatever. And it was just like, God, it was so, I mean, what you've overcome, Karen, and what you've done, Adriana, mm -hmm. I look at your tennis because, you know, you're an idol to me on a tennis court. And then, <laughs> I mean, I just, I, I, I can't tell you, like meeting you, Adriana, is so special because you're the tennis player. I'm <laughs> no, I, I think I think it would so be very you know it would be so much level. fun, so much so fun to play tennis with you. Yeah. Maybe one day that would be amazing. You were great. So all right, you guys. Thank all you right, so much, Judy. Again, Judy. I love you so much. Andrea, <laughs> thank I love you, you thank so you. much. I love you. Thank you.